Welcome to 13 Cubed. In this episode, we're going to talk about my DFIR workstation. I've gotten a lot of requests in the past to go over the software that I use for digital forensic lab work. And that's exactly what we're going to do. This is not scripted, so I'm just going to give you a stream of consciousness, so to speak. I do have a little cheat sheet sitting next to me, so I don't forget to mention a particular program or feature or something I want to go over. But I'm just going to show you what I use. And not everything you're going to see is something I use on a daily basis necessarily, but it's at least something I use frequently enough that I have it on this particular computer. Let's start with the hardware, just for your own personal information if you wanna know this. This is an Intel 12900KS CPU, 128 gigs of DDR5 RAM. Uh, there are two Samsung 980 Pro NVMe SSDs in it, a one terabyte for the boot drive and a two terabyte for the second drive that I use to store VMs and other such things. Uh, let's see, it's got an RTX 3090 Founders Edition in it. And I guess those are the main hardware specs you'd be interested in. Uh, it does have a 10 gig ethernet card connected to a 10 gig switch, which is also connected to a TrueNAS NAS with about 50 terabytes of storage. Uh, of course, after RAID Z2, it's not 50 terabytes, but you get the general idea. There's a pretty large storage NAS connected to it again at 10 gig that I can use for various other things, including video production. So let's talk about the various things that I have here. So let's start with WSL2. If you've watched any recent 13 cubed videos, then you're probably tired of me talking about WSL2, but it is what it is. It's one of those features that I can't live without. And what you're looking at here is a machine for Ubuntu 2204, which is what I currently have installed here. Within this machine, I have a tools directory, and within that, I have both Volatility 2 and Volatility 3, along with some miscellaneous scripts, including Abibus and Audit Tool, which are some that I've written, and then INDX Parse and PyWMI Persistence Finder, which we've covered in other 13 cubed episodes. So these are just some common utilities, and since the system was just recently built, I don't have a whole lot of other scripts here, but they would typically live here under the tools directory that I've created. I do have, as I alluded to, both Python 2 and Python 3 installed here within this Ubuntu 22.04 machine. So just about anything I would want to run from a Linux standpoint, I can do right here. And it's just awesome. If you look at the drop down here, you'll notice that, again, as I mentioned, this is the only Linux distro I currently have installed, but I could just as easily install 20.04, which might be necessary if you want to use Plazo and log to timeline, as I haven't gotten it to work very well under 2204, as of this recording anyway. So you might want to install 2004 for some older utilities or things that don't quite work well. Uh, of course, I could also install Kali Linux if I wanted to, as there's a distribution for that or any other Linux distros that I might want to. That kind of leads me into a segue for the second tool, which is Windows Terminal. That's obviously what I'm using here. And you can see I have PowerShell, Command Prompt, Azure Cloud Shell, the single WSL machine here, and then a couple of developer command prompts. Windows Terminal is equally awesome. And if you're not using it, well, why not? You should be. Windows Terminal is amazing. All right. Let me show you one other thing. I'm going to go ahead and load up the Microsoft Store because I want to mention well, actually two things. First off, did you know that WSL is actually an installable package under the store now? You can actually see it here. It's listed as Windows Subsystem for Linux Preview. Now you can go to turn Windows features on or off and actually click the checkbox and install it that way. But alternatively, you can just install this app, which I guess is what they call it, right? It's an app and it will actually turn on that Windows subsystem for Linux for you, and you'll get more frequent updates to the underlying subsystem as they release them. So I would highly recommend installing it from the store. And the same with Windows Terminal, if you don't currently have it, you can get it right here from the Windows Store. There's also the Windows Terminal Preview you see right here, which is the more bleeding edge version. So you'll notice the pre-badge right here. So either way, install Windows Terminal as well from the store. All right, so what else? Well, while we're at it, let's go ahead and talk about sysinternals. Sysinternals, which many of you are probably familiar with, is also available now on the Microsoft Store. That was not previously the case. Previously, you would have to go and download it from the sysinternals website, which is still a perfectly viable option, but I would recommend just getting it from the store, again, to facilitate easier updates and, well, easier installation. So I've installed that entire suite via this app 
right here. And while Sys Internals is not specific to forensics, there are numerous utilities included here, uh, such, you know, such as Process Explorer and Process Monitor, for example, that are excellent utilities. And just a wealth of other things I use as well, like RDC Man for remote desktop connections and other things. So Sys Internals, again, one of those things that I can't live without that gets installed on any Windows box I have. Also, let's talk about Power Toys. Power Toys is another one of those things that I have installed on this box, and it's awesome. Power Toys, not specifically a forensics tool, obviously, but it does give you quite the capability in terms of all of these different utilities you see here for image resizing and renaming and color picker, fancy zones, which is amazing, uh, add ons for File Explorer, and so on and so forth. So, definitely, Power Toys is one of those things I have always installed. All right, so as we move away from the kind of Windows OS specific things, let's talk about other actual programs that are installed packages. That is, they have an installer and they, you know, they actually install like a traditional Windows program. They're not standalone utilities. The first of those I'd like to mention is Decode. Decode, as of this recording, version 5.5. If you watch the recent video that I created about the MFT and MFT file records, well, this is the utility that I use to convert those 64-bit Windows file time timestamps to a human readable format. And you can see here, you can choose all of the various different information that you would want here for time decoding or time encoding. So I can paste in a hex value, for example, like we did in that episode, and easily convert it to any time I want to. And so this is an awesome utility, decode. You can get it from digital-detective.net, as you see here. And again, just a fantastic free utility to install. Next up, FTK Imager. I don't use this a whole lot, and to be honest with you, I've never been a huge FTK fan, but FTK Imager is free, and it is quite useful in some circumstances. So I would highly recommend you check it out and install it. It's one of those things that might be useful occasionally to take a look at an image or browse the contents of an image or something like that, export files from an image. So again, just another utility that I typically have installed. Next up, let's talk about one you may not be familiar with, which is PST Walker. So PST Walker is, in this case, this is the business version, by the way. PST Walker is an awesome Outlook PST and OST viewer. It's the best I've found. This is not a free product. This is the business or commercial version that I have purchased, 64-bit version of it. And if you need to perform analysis or look through OST or PST files, then this is probably one of the better utilities that I've found to do that. It's not prohibitively expensive. As I recall, it was like, I don't know, somewhere between $50 and $75 or something like that. Uh, don't quote me on that. But anyway, check it out. PST Walker, excellent utility for taking a look at email archives. All right, so with that out of the way, that, that's pretty much all of the ones that actually get installed. But if you take a look here on my desktop, I have this shortcut to C colon slash tools, which is where I keep most of the other tools I use. And we'll start off here with Arsenal Recon. If you have a forensics box and it doesn't have Arsenal Recon tools on it, then it's not a forensics box. Like, come on, seriously, you've got to have Arsenal Image Mounter and Hibernation Recon at a minimum. These, these utilities are awesome, both of which have dedicated 13 cubed episodes that go over the tools functionality, but I would highly recommend that. Arsenal Image Mounter is one of those tools I use all the time. This happens to be the commercial version of it, but when I launch it here, it's the standard interface that you have, I'm sure, seen before, and I'm sure you've seen it either in real life or in other 13 cubed episodes, but if you're not using AIM Arsenal Image Mounter, definitely check it out. If it's an image, and it can be mounted and it's not corrupted, then Arsenal Image Mounter is the tool that's gonna to be able to help you do that. Uh, and it's just amazing. You can also spin up virtual machines from those images. You can mount volume shadow copies. You can do all sorts of advanced things. Reset passwords. It does a lot, a lot more than just mounting images as well. So that's Arsenal Image Mounter. And then Hibernation Recon, again, this has been covered in a pretty recent 13 cubed episode. Definitely check out Hibernation Recon if you have any need to process Hibernation files. The interface looks very similar to Arsenal Image Mounter. It's super easy to use. Just click the button, point to a hyberfile.sys, and press the button to go, right? Now, obviously, there's a lot more to it than that. I'm oversimplifying things. Do check out that episode if you haven't already. But Hibernation Recon, again, one of those super useful utilities. 
Cape, again, a tool written by Eric Zimmerman, but distributed through Kroll. Uh, this is an awesome tool. I do not use this for my day job because we have internal tools that we develop to do a similar thing. But for lab work, I absolutely use Cape all the time. It's amazing. Again, there's a dedicated 13 cubed episode about Cape. I'm not going to get into its functionality now, but it's a triage acquisition tool if you're not familiar with it. All these episodes, by the way, I'm going to try to link in the top right corner in cards. So when I reference a 13 cubed episode that talks about a given tool, you'll find it up there. So do check those out. All right, so moving on, what about Nearsoft? Probably a lot of you are familiar with the Nearsoft suite of tools. I will mention that if you download the entire Nearsoft suite, you will get a couple of uh, malware hits with Windows Defender and various other AV products because there are some things here that can be used to view passwords and do other various things that could be used for not so legit purposes. But the tools themselves are absolutely awesome and highly recommended. I've used them for many, many years. They just do a ton of stuff. Probably one of the more frequently used tools here is Browsing History View, which is an excellent uh, browser history viewer for Chrome and Firefox and Edge and just about any browser you can think of. So Browsing History View, again, is amazing. Uh, there are several others as well, but um, you know you can find them all here within that entire suite. I would just download the entire suite, honestly, and uh, take a look at that. But you can see some of those here. I'm not going to run these or go into any detail here, but just know that the Nearsoft suite of tools is another thing that uh, can't live without. Moving on down, uh, of course, I have X-Ways. I have X-Ways version 20.5 as of this recording, uh, which is just, again, a phenomenal tool. If you haven't yet checked it out, then definitely X-Ways is something I would recommend. There's also a fantastic new book, the X-Ways Forensics Practitioner's Guide 2nd Edition, which will get you started in X-Ways. Highly recommend checking out that book. I'll throw a link on screen to it. If you've worked in forensics for any length of time, then I really don't have to tell you much about X-Ways. All right, Zimmerman tools. Again, if it's a forensics box and you don't have Zimmerman tools installed, then what are you doing? Right, so Zimmerman tools, again, something I use on a daily basis almost. I actually, yeah, I think probably almost every single day I use some Eric Zimmerman tool. You'll notice that here I have only the .NET 6 versions, the newer versions installed, but here they all are, and I'm sure they don't need any introduction. They've been featured in dozens of 13 cubed episodes. Timeline Explorer is probably the premier tool I use even for non-forensic work because it is a very capable CSV viewer they can handle extremely large files, uh, even better so than Excel. And of course it's read only, you can't change data with it, but that's kind of the point anyway. So if I wanna analyze a CSV, even if it's something that is small and has nothing to do with forensics or even something huge and nothing to do with forensics, I will typically use Timeline Explorer to do that. Other huge Zimmerman tools that I use that are a, a definite part of my uh, daily or at least very frequently used tools would be uh, Event Log Explorer, EBTXE, CMD. Uh, let's see, MFT Explorer is excellent as well. Registry Explorer, Shellbacks Explorer, uh, PE CMD to process prefetch. Again, we could go on for hours about Zimmerman tools and what each one of them does, but definitely install them here. There is a script, a PowerShell script that you can download to basically pull them all down and keep them updated for you, which is the recommended method of installing it. That's exactly what I would do to install it. And again, you can specify with that script to just install the .NET 6 versions of the tools, which are the newer versions, which I would recommend doing because why not? Latest and greatest. And then we have a few miscellaneous things here, which I will mention. Chainsaw, there's a dedicated episode about. Chainsaw is awesome. It's an event log uh, processing and parsing tool that is free and it's awesome. Uh, we'll skip over Cinebench. That's not a forensic specific tool. INDX Ripper, again, featured in a 13 cubed episode, very handy tool. Reg Ripper, of course, another handy tool. It's been around for quite a while. If you're not new to the forensics community, then you are no doubt familiar with Reg Ripper. Uh, maybe at some point, if there's interest, I'll create an episode on Reg Ripper. I just assumed it was so ubiquitous and so frequently used in the community that it probably didn't need an episode. But if you're just getting into the game, then maybe that would be something that's beneficial. Let me know in the comments. All right, so what else? Um, I have Mimikatz on here. That's the actual Mimikatz because I was testing out some uh, credential theft 
related things and uh, what kind of artifacts will be left behind with various research I'm performing. So I do, in this case, have Mimic Gats installed, or not installed, but present, I should say. And Bellina Etcher is just a very quick and dirty tool to write an image to a USB drive. You could use um, uh, any other number of tools as well. Uh, I think Rufus is another one I've used quite a bit in the past. Or the all-important DD. Just don't mess up the IF and the OF, right? But either way, just a nice tool to uh, be able to write something to a flash drive, such, a, such as an image or something like that. So, All right, so that is pretty much a quick tour of the main tools that I use on this forensic box. And, you know, I'm sure I'm missing something, right? There's always something else that I probably uh, have. I, I guess the last thing I will mention, kind of an honorable mention, uh, I kind of alluded to it before, but this is RDC Man. You can see here in the top left, I actually have a Windows 10, 2012 R2, 2016, and 2019, and soon a 2022 VM. These are hosted all on ESXi. So I do have a completely dedicated machine that is an ESXi box that's hosting these machines. And if I want to, you know, pull up like a, a Windows 10 VM or something like that um, in that ESXi environment, I can simply double click on this and it will pull it up. And actually, you can see it. There's already an existing session that's pulled up right here for an upcoming 13 cubed episode. And I can do the same with any of these. I'll just double click on one and it will automatically uh, connect to it and put it up here at the top. And then I can easily switch back and forth between them um, and then, you know, very, very easily perform lab work or whatever. You're actually going to see this prominently featured in an upcoming 13 cubed episode that I'm working on now. Uh, I'll drop a hint. It's all about Impacket and how to detect Impacket usage. So, well, again, I won't spoil anything, but that's coming up. And super easy to just switch back and forth between them, as you can see right here. So much more convenient than actually just pulling up separate MSTSC RDP sessions. We'll go ahead and leave that there. Uh, like I said, I'm sure I'm leaving something else out. Oh, oh, I guess I should mention Visual Studio Code. Again, another one of those not forensic specific utilities, but something that I absolutely have installed on every box and I use all the time. Visual Studio Code is extremely powerful. In addition to that, my other text editor of choice is VI. Yep, that's right. Use it all the time in WSL. I love VI. Amazing. All right, so I hope this has been useful for you. I hope it's been beneficial. And, you know, I, I would very much like to hear in the comments if, if any of these tools are new to you or if this was helpful to you. I imagine that if you've already worked in forensics for a while, this is going to be like old news to you and not super useful. But if you're just getting into the field, then hopefully this has provided some sort of benefit to you. So let me know. But that's all for now. So, hey, as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. It helps out the channel. And I will catch you in the next 13 Cubed episode.